Today, I want to talk about the automatic SQL transpiler, an interesting new feature of database release 23C. The transpiler is intended to fix a fundamental problem within Oracle, the use of two languages. We have SQL, a set-oriented declarative language. We use it to tell the database what we want and let the database decide the best way to do that. But we also have PL SQL. PL SQL is a procedural language. We tell the database exactly what to do. The languages have different execution engines because they work in different ways, but they have to work together because SQL can call PL SQL and PL SQL can call SQL. When either of those happens, Oracle has to make a context switch between the two engines, which takes time. Usually this doesn't matter, but some applications use a large number of user-defined PL SQL functions. And if they're used in a manner that means they are called repeatedly, it can be a problem. Furthermore, functions can mess up the cost-based optimization because the optimizer doesn't know what's going on inside the function. The function is compiled code and the optimizer can't see inside it. The solution is the SQL transpiler. When a statement containing a user-defined function hits the optimizer, the transpiler will attempt to transform the function into pure SQL before parsing the statement. If successful, this avoids the need for context switches and gives the optimizer better information. It's all done with one parameter, SQL transpiler, which by default is set to off. Let's try a simple example. Working in the Scott demonstration schema, here's a simple problem. Select star from EMP, 14 employees, they've all got a salary, and some of them have a commission as well. If I want to see who's earning over a certain amount, I need to filter the table on the sum of the salary column and the commission problem column. For example, Select star from M where sal plus com greater than 2000. And, huh? Only one row has come back. Mr. Martin, what's happened to say Mr. King? His salary is 5000. What's happened to Jones? His salary, 2975. They're being lost by this query. Well, we all know the problem. It's these nulls that are distorting the results. So what can we do to avoid that simple bug? And we know the problem, but our end users might not. What I should have done was this. I should have wrapped com in NVL. And now I do get the correct results. I get the seven people whose total remuneration is over 2000. How can we ensure that our end users won't be making mistakes like that. Well, one solution is to give them a user-defined function. Create a replace function total, passing in sal and com. Then begin. And what I shall return is sal plus nvl com. And compile. Now our users can run this. Select staff map where total salcom greater than 2000 and they get the correct results. But take a look at the execution plan, which I'll do with also trace. Run the statement again. Back come the rows and we see the execution plan in the filter section there is the function, the function itself, and the values passed through it, the arguments passed through it. That has happened because by default, the transpiler is disabled. If you look at the parameter, SQL transpiler off. If I enable it, 
I'll just do it at the session level. All session set SQL transpiler on. I'll flush the shared pool to make sure I get a hard pass. And now if I run the statement again, exactly the same statement, calling my function. When we look at the filter here, we see that the function has in fact been expanded into the underlying SQL. There's no PL SQL to be seen. But what about performance? Well, I'll flush the shared pool and I'll put the transpiler off. Now I'm going to write a simple loop that will call that function a few thousand times. Declare a variable. Begin. And for my loop, I'll do for i in 1 to 100,000. And what I'll do in that loop is select count star to n from m where total salcom over 2000. End loop, end the block, and now run it. See how long it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nearly nine seconds. Do it again to make sure that we get repeatable results. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, again, nearly nine seconds. I'll flush the shared pool and I shall enable the transpiler and run the block again. Reinitialize my variable, begin the loop counter, the code, end the loop, end the block, and see how long it takes with the transpiler enabled. One, two, three, four, 4.3 seconds. Do it again. One, two, three, 3.373 3 seconds. So what we've done is we've doubled the performance. That's not bad. And it does emphasize that using PL SQL, well, it's usually good, but it comes with a price. And this 23C feature can sometimes mitigate it. To conclude, PL SQL is good in many ways, but it does come with a performance overhead. The transpiler can fix some issues, and I can see no reason not to enable it in all databases. It isn't perfect yet. You'll see in the docs that there are quite a few limitations. However, why not give it a try? You've really nothing to lose. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel.